Good evening and welcome to the CollegeWise Virtual College Fair. We're glad you joined us this evening. Tonight's presentation is a six by six format, which means that our six colleges, although there are only five in the session, will have six minutes each to present. As this is a webinar, you as a participant are muted and your video is off. So if you do have questions for our panelists, please ask those by using the Q&A button to type your questions to the presenters at any time. There is one more set of sessions after this one. So if there are other schools you'd like to learn about, please sign up for those. And if there are any schools that you happen to miss, all of the sessions have been recorded for future viewing. So please go back to the CollegeWise website where you registered for this program to view recordings of all of our sessions. We'll start tonight's block with the University of Dubuque. Well, thank you, Julie. I appreciate that. And um, just want to welcome everybody uh, that is here and get a chance to learn a little bit about these all of these schools. So um, I am going to share my uh, screen here. And I'm just going to walk through some basics of uh, University of Dubuque. Um, for many people, they're not even quite sure where is Dubuque. Um, and the best way to describe that uh, is to say that we are right on the border of uh, Iowa, Illinois, and Wisconsin. And so if you look, uh, we're about three hours west of Chicago, uh, about three hours west of Milwaukee. And if you just kind of draw a line almost straight west uh, from either of those communities, uh, we're kind of right in between them. Uh, again, right where those three states come together. Um, a lot of people think of Iowa as a very flat landscaped area. Uh, it most certainly is not. Uh, it has a beautiful rolling hills. Um, and just a wonderful, wonderful place to go to college in a town of 55,000. Uh, there's a little bit of everything, certainly one of everything for most of the comforts uh, that you're looking for. And so, um, you know, doing a six by six, it's tough to do a full blown presentation. So I just wanna walk you through a few highlights uh, of who University of Dubuque is um, as an institution and, and uh, give you a little bit of a, a semblance of certainly what we, we look like. And so as you look here, um, I'm gonna take you to kind of what we call our splash page that shows you a little bit of who we are. Uh, it's called UD Starts With You. And we do put you the student at the forefront of everything that we do uh, because we are a small private college. We have 2000 students, average class size is about 18 students. So when I say it really is all about you, we have the ability to make that, make that happen. And uh, we have bring students from all over the country, I should say right away, almost a third of our incoming class uh, comes from outside of the Midwest. Uh, we really pride ourselves on diversity um, and uh, we have amazing um, numbers of students uh, who come from so many diverse backgrounds, whether it be from the East Coast as we're talking about, the West Coast, uh, from the South, we have uh, many students from overseas who are going to school uh, and American schools overseas that come to the University of Dubuque that we've built relationships with. So uh, coming to the University of Dubuque from far away is something that is absolutely normal here. And you'll get a chance to meet a lot of different people uh, from so many different places. So um, to talk a little bit, I'm gonna start with, uh, as we talk about student life, um, there's a little snippet here that says, while it's true the test scores may tell us something about you, uh, believe it or not, it doesn't tell the whole picture. And uh, we've certainly been on the forefront of this as many schools are starting to become test optional. We are 100% test optional right now. Uh, we don't even uh, ask for an application fee. So uh, we try to remove as many barriers as possible. Uh, and we've done a lot of research on this and realizing that uh, student test scores are all over the place when they come to us. Uh, and many of them are extremely successful deans list students and, and do extremely well and uh, certainly move on into to great opportunities afterward. Um, so we really focus on, on kind of each, each segment of who our students are, uh, what do they want to do in their life. Career preparation is huge. A basic, um, I should say, a liberal arts core uh, is very much a part of who we are. Uh, we have over 80 student-led organizations on campus, and we think that that's incredible. It gives students a chance to be involved and to participate in something that they're passionate about. And when they are, we know that's when the good things happen, whether they're in athletics, performing arts, um, for any student-led organization, there's so much to see. Um, so what does UD look like? Uh, these are some pictures of our campus. And we were, believe it or not, founded in 1852. 
and uh, yet it doesn't look like that. Uh, we've put over $300 million into this campus in the past 20 years. And you can see right here a little video uh, showcasing a bit of our campus. And it's just absolutely gorgeous. Um, I would put our campus up against about any school in the nation as far as the size is concerned and, and uh, how amazing the facilities are. So uh, academic facilities from beautiful science labs, uh, that prepare you for biology and chemistry and, and graduate studies uh, through an amazing library, performing arts center, as you can see, is the biggest one there. Um, and just such an awesome, awesome place. It feels like you're in a bigger school uh, than you really uh, are. And you can see our football field is up there uh, as well. I want to talk a little bit about majors. Uh, we are a professional programs college. So some of the biggest majors that you see at UD, um, business and accounting, a very unique one is aviation, uh, aviation uh, technology, which would be drone flying, uh, aviation management, flight operations, students that want to become pilots, uh, and very traditional majors, business, biology, chemistry, communication, uh, computer forensics, obviously uh, safety uh, online is a huge issue. Uh, we are a very, very good school for teaching students in the technology sector. Uh, criminal justice has been our fastest growing major by far. Uh, digital art and design for those that want to do graphics. Uh, education, 100% uh, placement rate for all students that want to become teachers, whether it be elementary health, uh, secondary education, including high school, uh, teaching, coaching, uh, so much to do in the education field and, and a huge demand, certainly here in the Midwest. Uh, human health science for those students that want to go on uh, and have, have amazing opportunities uh, in the healthcare arena. And we'll talk more about that. Um, marketing, mathematics, uh, course with data being a big deal. A lot of our students are into that. Uh, music, uh, nursing, we've had a 100% placement rate uh, on, the, on the program. And it's just been an incredible opportunity for students to have 100% uh, pass rate on the NCLEX exam as well. Students that wanna go pre-law health professions, just a pretty cool place. Uh, again, athletics, uh, admissions staff right here, we absolutely work as hard as we can to take care of you and give you an awesome opportunity. We work hard on financial planning. As I tell students every day, if you want to be here, we will find a way to make it work. And that's what I have to share. Thank you so much, Tim. And I can absolutely vouch for the fact that Dubuque is one of the hilliest places you might <laughs> ever encounter. So thanks for sharing that. Sure. Our next presenter is from Millican University. All right. Hello, everybody. I'll get my screen all pulled up here and we'll get started. Start my timer as well. Oh, my goodness. Do, 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 do. Face ID, maybe. All right. So a little bit more about Millican University. Um, and we are also, uh, similar to the we are also a private institution, um, but we are located in Decatur, Illinois. So we are about 45 minutes away. If you know Springfield, Illinois, um, that is about where we are located. We're also close to Bloomington and to Champaign-Urbana. Um, so we have 2,000 students on Millican's campus. We do have smaller class sizes, um, but with the connections that we have to the industry and a lot of the different career fields that students are able to go into, um, the connections that we have really prepare students similar to what maybe a larger institution is what that is able to do. Um, we do have um, a vast array of students that come from Illinois, as well as many different states across the United States. Um, we have about, students from about, about 37 different states without the, throughout the entire U.S., but also from about 35 different countries across the entire world. So that is super exciting. 100% of our students do receive um, a scholarship, at least one scholarship, and oftentimes students receive many different scholarships from Millican. Um, and that can really help to make sure that a private institution becomes far more affordable and comparable to other institutions. And at Millican, we do have a 96% graduate success rate. And that's for students that enter, either enter graduate school within six months of graduation or um, with entering employment as soon as they graduate from Millican. Um, sometimes students, especially when it comes to education or nursing or any field where they're often looking for um, new graduates to be able to immediately enter the field. Oftentimes with their Millican training, they can find um, employment even before they cross the stage of graduation. So that is always super exciting. With our academic programs, we have 50 plus academic programs and concentrations at our university. And we do also have three different graduate programs as well for students to choose from. So there can be an opportunity to do like a four plus one program. Um, or, you know, if you have athletic training, if you start with exercise science and sport, and then you do one year with the athletic training graduate program, then you have the opportunity to be able to pursue that while you are still at Millican. 
We do also have 23 different men's and women's division three sports, and we're part of the College Conference of Illinois and Wisconsin. So with a little bit more of those majors, um, we do have four different colleges and schools. If you are interested in, so College of Arts and Sciences, that's for a lot of the science, technology, engineering, and math majors. That is English and communication, behavioral sciences, modern languages. There's a wide myriad of majors included in that particular college. Um, we also have the College of Fine Arts. So I myself was a theater graduate from Millikan. So if you're interested in theater or performing arts, that is going to be in the College of Fine Arts as well. Um, and and then we do have um, music as well as art, arts technology, arts administration. If you want to be a business person but in the arts um, within the community, then that would definitely be a college for you. Then we do also have college professional studies that includes those professional degrees. So that is school of education, school of nursing, as well as exercise science and sport, as I mentioned before. And then we have Tabor School of Business. So if you were interested in accounting and finance, if you're interested in entrepreneurship, international business, business management, then that is where that is housed. And this is our campus. So even though we have 2000 students on campus, it definitely doesn't look like it is a school that only has about 2000 students. Um, so we have various different buildings um, just recently. And you can actually see on the right hand side, you can see the construction for what is now the completed, the brand new $29 million Center for Theater and Dance. Um, so for any students that are interested in the arts, we want to make sure that students know that we are an institution that funds those ventures and funds those careers. And we are not defunding the arts like maybe some other institutions might be or even some high schools. I know that from my high school, maybe not as much support in the arts as there could be. So there is um, a it's a liberal arts college in, in every sense of the word um, and making sure that all majors and career fields are supported here at Millican. And then if there's something that we really emphasize, which is called performance learning. So it means that you get to be part of a business and get hands-on experiences that you cannot get anywhere else here at Millican University. Um, the, probably my favorite example of this is that Tour Smart Bus Edition is taking the classroom on the road. That is where students actually went on a tour bus with a band and they got to take a Millican class and they got credit for being roadies for the band Pig Face with Martin Atkins, who is a faculty member here on campus. So if you're wanting to get the experience of what it's like to be part of a music tour, that would be an awesome immersion opportunity to be a part of. Um, we have students in education that go into the Decatur Public Classroom starting their freshman year and they get to outside of just their student teaching semester they get the chance to actually put their lesson plans into place um, and be part of the classrooms here in the Decatur community. Blue Brew Coffee is a completely student-run coffee shop run by Millikan's Tabor School of Business students. Blue Connection is an art gallery completely run by students in the art um, majors here on campus. They are the curators. They have to market their art shows and know which artists are going to be displaying their works in their gallery. Pipe Dream Studio Theater is a completely student-run theater company on Millikan's campus. We have um, Blue Satellite Press, which uses an ancient, or not ancient, more antique um, letterpress technique for creating poetry um, that when you learn the antique styles, you also have a better understanding of more modern contemporary um, printing um, processes. Millikan Arts Cafe, that's where students in the School of Music have a chance to um, create a set list and be able to um, bring student uh, performers that want to be able to um, show their work to campus. MUPC is performance consulting for web design and um, development. So if you want the opportunity to be able to, you know, put your major into practice, then I suggest that you take a look at Millikan and let me know. Oh, that's my timer. <laughs> Thank you so much. And let well me know played. when I'm done for sure. <laughs> for uh, sure. Then. Our next presenter is from Nebraska Wesleyan. All right, good afternoon, everybody. Let me go ahead and get my presentation up for you. Okay, so my name is Matthew Miller and I'm an assistant director of admissions here at Nebraska Wesleyan University and I lead the out-of-state recruiting for our admissions office. So to start off, uh, Nebraska Wesleyan, we are a small private liberal arts institution. We have about 1700 traditional undergrad students over 130 or over 130 different majors, minors, and pre-professional programs. Some of our strongest programs lie within pre-medical, nursing, uh, health and human performance, business, and also the theater arts um, on stage blog actually listed Nebraska Wesleyan's acting program, the BFA, in the top 25 in the country. We do nearly 50 productions a year. 
We have over 90 different student organizations and clubs. We have three fraternities, three sororities, and 25 intramural sports, and a lot of different things that you can do on campus. And the US News and World Report uh, named Nebraska Wesleyan the top 10% of regional Midwestern universities. Um, but we are unique in our environment because we are a small school, but we are located in Lincoln, Nebraska, which is the capital city of Nebraska. It is a top ranked Midwest college city. There's roughly 330,000 people here in Lincoln. Uh, we're right across town from the University of Nebraska Lincoln, which is our largest state school. Um, so there's roughly 50,000 college students in Lincoln alone. Um, so if you're looking for a school that gives you all the small school, you know, personal attention and all of those great benefits, but also want to be in a thriving community with a lot of college students and young people in general, um, and a ton of resources, Lincoln's a great place to be. Um, Lincoln's also considered to be in the Silicon Prairie, and Gallup has recently ranked Lincoln as America's happiest city. So when it comes to personal attention, um, as is with most small private institutions, our students faculty ratio is low, it's 11 to one. Of course, those smaller class sizes mean more meaningful relationships, our average class size is around 16 students. Every single class is taught by a professor at Nebraska Wesleyan, you're never going to have a grad assistant or anything like that. And we also do want to make it about you, we're not going to prescribe you um, anything at Nebraska Wesleyan within your academic curriculum. Um, our professors are your advisors and they want to make sure that they're guiding you on what you want to do um, as a student because we know that each student is different in their passions and uh, classes they desire to take. So recently we've added some things to our campus. We've added direct entry honors programs in nursing and athletic training. We added in a five-year master's of business administration, a sister school in Germany, which is one of five. Um, we also added a computer science major and we've recently invested nearly $70 million back into our campus, which came from donations. Um, and so we're upgrading our academic facilities. As you can see on the right there, that's our new Ackley Hall of Science, um, which houses biology, psychology, and chemistry. Uh, that was a $29 million facility that opened up in 2019. Investing in stronger faculty, giving coaches more resources, growing student scholarships, upgrading athletic facilities. We are also an NCAA Division III institution in the American Rivers Conference, and also just keeping our campus beautiful for our students. When it comes to outcomes, we've had a lot of success recently. In the 2019 graduating class, 99% of those students have already reported having jobs or admission into graduate school. Employers frequently call us asking for our students because they understand that Nebraska Wesleyan students are critical thinkers, constant learners, and curious souls. Our renowned NWU Archway curriculum prepares students for a variety of career, different career paths. We want to make sure that you aren't limited um, after college in the different jobs that you can pursue. And we are actually a top 10 producer of NCAA Academic All-Americans, and that's all three divisions in the NCAA, so over 1,100 schools, and we are ranked ninth in the country. Affordability is obviously very important as well. Um, our director of financial aid reviews and processes every single financial aid form by hand. We give larger scholarships to a broader range of students because every student deserves the chance to have an affordable college education and 100% of our admitted students are awarded financial aid. And to jump into that a little bit more, these are our fall 2021 first year scholarships. So we have also gone with a test optional route if that is the best pathway for you. Um, but there is a GPA and ACT or SAT combination that you can go with as well. Um, so if you are a student who maybe isn't the best test taker and have a very strong GPA, um, we want to make sure that we're providing you with the most amount of uh, academic money that we can to help with your cost of college. Um, your specific admissions counselor, uh, when you apply to Nebraska Weston, will work through this process with you hand in hand to make sure that you are getting the most amount of financial aid possible. Um, but each admitted student, as you can see at the bottom here, will start with at least $15,000 per year um, with our Nebraska Strong Grant. So what are your next steps? Um, apply, of course. Our application is free. Our early action deadline has actually passed recently, uh, but there's still a lot of great ways to add in additional scholarship money, too. Um, we do have two virtual scholarship events, which are in Zoom webinar format. Um, just for attending one of these events, you will earn a thousand dollar per year scholarship. So if you're interested in the natural and health sciences, which would include things like um, pre-med, uh, nursing, exercise science, also engineering, um, computer science, sport management, and those different majors. Uh, we have one on November 10th from seven to 8 p.m. Central time. 
And we also have a catch all all majors event on February 8th from 7 to 8 p.m. Um, so that is going to be just a grouping of different majors and things like that. These events are really good to meet people on campus and hear from students and things like that. You can also schedule a virtual or in-person visit, which gives you another $1,000 per year grant for doing that. And you can always call or text me with any questions you have about Nebraska Wesleyan. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our next presenter is from Hannibal LaGrange College. Hey, Rachel, I believe you're muted. I don't know what you're talking about. I am not muted. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, my name is Rachel Abrahamson. I'm one of the admissions counselors here at Hannibal LaGrange University. Our motto here at the school is knowledge for service. We are a small liberal arts university. We're located in Northeast Missouri. So we're also the home of Mark Twain, or if you are a local, also Samuel Clemens, if that name rings a bell. But before we get too far into talking about HLGU, I wanna give you an opportunity to meet a few of the people and the face, see some of the faces that are here on campus. So that is just a brief look at our campus for you to be able to see just a couple of the faces that are here on campus. I can tell you that I know all the people who were on there speaking and they are all lovely individuals. Here's a panoramic view of our campus. As you can see, we are surrounded by trees and green and you can even see the Mississippi River over off in the corner there too. Our campus is fairly small. We have about a thousand students total and we are fairly spread out within our campus but is also extremely walkable. So we don't have any students who have problems getting to class. I know I can personally walk from the farthest end of our campus up to the part that is closest to the road in just about 10 minutes. So really easy to get to all of your classes. If you want to drive, you can. Um, and I would highly recommend that sometimes in the cold weather that we get being so close to the Mississippi and because we're in the Midwest in general. But you also wanna know probably a little bit more about HLGU. So we are a Christian 
University. Uh, we are actually owned by the Missouri Baptist Convention, and that means we are also part of the Southern Baptist Convention as well. We are a small liberal arts university, so you do, in as a Christian university, you are required to attend chapel once a week, but don't worry, uh, we are socially distancing that this year, so no problems that have we have had there. But because we are small, that doesn't mean we, you don't have good opportunities while you're here. So small size, big opportunities. Just because you are a business major, that doesn't mean you can't participate in art club or you can't be in any of our theater productions. You have every opportunity to participate in intramural sports. You can be a part of a variety of clubs that we have here on campus. And you can participate in a lot of events that are going on here too. Because we're so small and because we are private, we do cost a little bit, but we only cost approximately $33,000 a year. Now that includes your housing, that's meals, that's your tuition, and that's also your general fees. So $33,000 is not that bad, but we do understand that finances are always going to be an issue with every house, regardless of how much money that you bring home. So we do have a lot of scholarship opportunities that are available for our students. So as a first time freshman, all of our students who apply and are admittable are eligible for $6,000 in scholarships. That's our base. Now those scholarships will be a little bit different uh, if you are a transfer student, but they also, but for first time freshmen, those start at 6,000 and for transfers that starts at 5,500. And always remember that college is gonna be an investment opportunity. And we wanna help you not just invest monetarily in your education, but we also want you to be able to invest in your experiences. We have study abroad opportunities. We have a trip that we take every year to Israel. We also have a lot of mission trip opportunities. And we also have as well a lot of student life events that happen here on campus. And so we are super excited to be able to have our students here and participating. So once again, if you've got questions, feel free. You can always give me a call or email me. And we also have Kayla Hoochin, who is unable to be here today, but she is our admissions counselor who is in charge of the East Coast. So anyone who is in Illinois going East, you are welcome to contact Kayla. And don't forget to check out our website as well. And feel free to go on ahead and apply or schedule a visit to campus. You can come in person or do a virtual visit with us but we look forward to seeing you. Thank you so much, Rachel. And I apologize for the, the, misspe the misspeaking at the beginning. I can't speak now from Hannibal <laughs> LaGrange University. And our last presenter tonight is from the University of Missouri. All right, hi everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. My name is Michaela Vaughn. I'm one of the representatives with the University of Missouri. Um, I really help our on-campus team. I usually travel in the state of Missouri specifically, but this year is a little bit different. So we get to greet people um, kind of all over. So um, with the University of Missouri, our nickname is Mizzou. Um, we're a little bit different from some of the other institutions that we've met with tonight. So a little bit with us is we are located in Columbia, Missouri. We're smack dab middle of the state in between Kansas City and St. Louis. Um, we're about two hours away from each of them. There are larger airports in Kansas City and St. Louis to get you direct flights on your way home, unless you're carpooling with other um, students coming to Columbia. Uh, but then we also have a regional airport about 15 minutes south of our campus um, that can get you some connecting flights within Chicago, Dallas, and Denver. So a lot of different ways to get home. Um, with Columbia, we really have that small town quintessential feel here. So we don't really have a lot of skyscrapers. You can kind of see that on the screen here. Um, we have that small town feel when you're walking um, just right across the street to downtown. So when you're on campus, you can go grab a cup of coffee across the street. You can study downtown. You can go to different music venues. You can find a lot of pizza shops to go to and really become a part of our community in Columbia, not just our community at Mizzou. So you can do some resume builders. You also can go ahead and do um, different philanthropy, find that special place to eat. So when you bring friends and family um, back, you can really show them those big places to go. Now, what really, really makes us special are our students. Um, so we have over 30,000 students. We are the largest institution in the state of Missouri. And um, when we go ahead and break down what that looks like, um, we actually include our online graduate and professional presence in that number. And we're about 24,500 undergraduate students 
coming from all across the country and also over 120 international countries. So you're gonna meet people that you never knew in high school, but you also get to meet people from oceans away at the exact same time. And you get to have something in common with them. And that's because you chose Mizzou just like they did. So it's a really great conversation starter in getting to know Mizzou. Now Mizzou is a little bit different in that sense because we get to be two institutions in one. Um, so we are the land grant institution of our state as well as being a top tier research institution at the same time. Um, it provides us with more major opportunities and I'll get into those in just a moment. Um, but we are part of the Association of American Universities. We're actually one of 34 public institutions to be a part of it. The only other one in the state of Missouri is Washington University, so we're very proud to be among them. Um, we also are one of six public institutions to have a med school, law school, and vet school on our campus. So you can always look at continuing your education um, and really going ahead and shadowing in those areas because we are the show me state after all. So we like to show you how to do something rather than just tell you about it by getting all that hands-on learning experience in every single one of your majors um, inside and outside of the classroom. So we're really um, prideful of that as well. Now, some things that we can be working on, because um, we know this is a really overwhelming year. Um, we know senior year can be really busy just on a normal year, but this year kind of has some curveballs to it. So um, one thing we can always be working on is applying. Um, our application opens August 1st of your senior year, and we're on what's called rolling admission. So we look at you as an individual student. You can go ahead and apply all the way up until the June 1st of your senior year. We do suggest applying early though, just because you're gonna get more information along the way when it comes to scholarships, your academic program, um, maybe some additional com uh, competitive scholarships that are due December 1st. Um, you might hear more about housing. So it's always good to apply early to get more information along the way. Now, when we look at applying, we have two ways to apply this year for our fall 2021 academic year. So when we look at that, we can do test optional. So applying without a test score, or we can apply with a test score. Either way that we're applying, we'll need a high school transcript sent to us. So we're looking at four years of English, four years of math, three years of social studies, three years of science, two years of the same foreign language, and then we're gonna take your highest fine art that you have. Um, your, high, or your high school counselor can go ahead and help out by sending over that transcript to us along with your test score. So I not know not everybody's able to test right now. I know we're not able to test as many times as we always want to, um, but if we do apply with a test score, we will use your composite or your super score if you are able to go ahead and take that multiple times. Um, at Mizzou, a 24 is your golden ticket number on the ACT or an 1160 on the SAT, as long as you're within good academic standing. Um, if we're testing below that, we go ahead and utilize our sliding scales. So for example, if I have a 21 on the ACT, I need to have a 3.05 core GPA. So specifically in those classes that we just mentioned before um, to go ahead and be automatically admitted at Mizzou. Now we take test scores all the way through the July test date of your senior year for admission as well as for scholarships. So keep sending those in, even if it's not able to test until next April. Um, and same goes for transcripts. Always send in a new transcript if that GPA is getting higher because senior year still counts. So stay strong in that. Now, if you're applying without a test score, um, same application, and I'll talk about that in just a moment, um, but we would go ahead and submit a personal statement and resume. We can send in a test score later on to maximize our scholarship opportunities. Um, we'll still be reviewed for some of our automatic um, opportunities as well, but we can always go ahead and send that in too. Um, this is something that you can go ahead and apply now, and we'll let you know usually within about two to four weeks of applying, um, and you'll always get a status page to help us out. Now, when we're kind of going ahead and working on this, our application is about 15 to 20 minutes to complete. Um, don't have to worry about an essay unless you're doing that test optional. And then we'll review you for automatic scholarships as well. Feel free to come on a campus visit too. It's a great way to learn more about Mizzou, our scholarships, our academic programs, over 300 options that we have. So we hope to see you soon. Thank you so much. And now that our presenters have given you a little bit more information about each of their schools, I would love to have them all come together here and turn their cameras and their microphones back on so that I can um, ask a question or two of all of them. So um, friends, if you had one piece of advice to give to students who are looking for a college, pandemic or no, just what's your best advice you would give to a student? And we'll go ahead and we will start with Tim at the University of Dubuque. Sure, no, thanks for the question. I think that the most important thing is to communicate. Um, uh, do more than just search out the website. 
uh, reach out to the admission counselors, have conversations. If you have concerns, don't be afraid to share those concerns. Share us, share with us what your fears are. Share with us what you're worried about. Uh, we understand finances is always at the top of the list, but um, you know, if you have anxiety and, and, and things, especially with this pandemic and what's going on, I think it's just so important. The number one thing is just you know, pick three or four schools that you love and just reach out to those schools and communicate with their admission staff. There's no question we'll be excited to uh, have that conversation. What kind of advice can you give us for Milliken? Um, there's a quote that one of our faculty members uses is that finding a school is like finding a pair of jeans that fits you. No one can tell you that the pair of jeans fits you better than only and only you can really know. It's going to feel tight in some places and it's going to be like, oh, this makes my butt look good. You know, only you can be the one to determine that. So um, when you go to a campus, like ask all the same questions to all the different universities and then you find the one where you feel the most at home and that fits what it is that you need um, and all of the, you know, the curriculum that you need. Um, out of a school. So um, you are going to know that when you find your home that you will know it. And how would you help students who are thinking about Nebraska Wesleyan? Yeah, I think like, like Tim was right on point with that, like make sure you're communicating with your admissions people and representatives, keep an open mind. You know, we have some different size schools in this panel today. Um, you know, find out what the best fit is for you. Also don't make assumptions, I think, especially when it comes to financial aid. Most of these schools or all schools are going to try to help you with that. And there's a lot more opportunity than what most people would think. If there's virtual events or you have the ability to tour these schools, do as many of those things as you can. And because I think at the end of the day, you're going to know you're going to get that feel um, and that comfort level. And that's going to be a really great deciding factor for you when you sit down to, to choose your school. So, Rachel, how could you help these students? Um, there are a few different things that I would do. The big one would be, I, I tell my students, you need to make a list of the things that are, are, you have to have these in your school and make a list of like three things that you're like, no, these are deal breakers. Like, I absolutely do not want this in my school. And then ask the questions. Uh, there aren't, there really aren't any stupid questions. And I have been asked some really funny ones, <laughs> but if they are important to you, we want to be able to answer those questions for you because they're important to you. And if it's going to make you feel comfortable to ask me what the dress code is in Northeast Missouri in the winter, I am happy to tell you what the dress code is in Northeast Missouri in the winter. You never know. It could be like you a t-shirt one minute and it a snow just the today. <laughs> snowed here too. So how about you, Michaela? How can you help those students? Yeah, just kind of echoing um, what every other rep has said, you know, always communicate. I think you can learn a lot of information just by reaching out and asking even just where are you located or what are your scholarships. So I think it's always important to go ahead and reach out and always try to do a campus visit, whether you can do virtual or in person. I think you can get a lot of information, um, and especially virtual. You can meet with more schools all at one time. So I think it's a really great opportunity um, to Zoom with someone, I know it's not always ideal, but it's a great way to get a face-to-face -face contact and get all your questions answered too. Outstanding. Well, thank you all for the information that you shared and obviously for that advice that you're giving these students. I just have a few things to wrap us up here. Um, and so thank you again for joining us. There will be a quick survey when you finish. So you'll click out of here and then the survey will appear. Please take a second to finish that so that you can help us out as we move forward. Go ahead and sign up for some additional sessions. And again, the recording is available should you want to review it. So again, panelists, thank you so much. Have a great evening and everyone be well.